What is happening team? So I'm on the south coast of England and I've driven down this afternoon to possibly one of the prettiest fishing seaside towns I've ever been to. It's called Hastings Old Town. And I'm on the beach and there's so many photographic opportunities. All these old boats and that funicular in the background. And the sun, maybe about 90 minutes left. So I'm just gonna go and explore and see what I can find. So the composition I've gone for here is two fishing boats keeled over and bathed in golden sunshine. I'm probably gonna take two exposures here, one at F11 to keep in focus the buildings in the background, and another frame wide open at 1.8 for a different look and some separation. Then I'll decide in post which to use. I absolutely love this tired old vessel here. There is a fair amount of clutter in the scene though and some not so nice blue tarpaulin and buckets which I'll probably desaturate in post and bring out those gorgeous rusty colours. Now if there was one lens I was allowed to take with me anywhere on a trip, it would be the Nifty 50 1.8 prime lens. Now I can hear some of you say, surely it's the 24 to 70 millimeter 2.8. And while this is a great lens, that extra stop and a bit of light that you get with the 50 millimeter and those gorgeous blurry backgrounds, plus it weighs about the same as a smartphone. The Nifty 50 is one of the cheapest prime lenses you can buy with real professional results and a great lens if you're just starting out in photography. Every camera bag should have one of these. I use this for portraits, professional modeling shoots, street photography, and now look, landscape photography. A glorious sunset is forming just behind these two ships. This is a perfect opportunity for an exposure blended image. I'm focusing on the first boat and exposing for the sky, which is losing virtually all detail in the foreground. And I'll take another frame at a third of a second for a perfectly exposed foreground. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you why this style of editing has much better results than HDR merging. Going for a spot of subject isolation here to pick out the funicular using my 70 to 200 millimeter 2.8 lens. Because the ambient light is very low now, my shutter is at 1.3 seconds, which means I'm shooting with a two second timer to eliminate camera shake.
I just wanted to show you an HDR merge versus an exposure blend and why I think exposure blending has much better and more dramatic results. If we take these three exposures, a middle exposure, a foreground exposure and an exposure for the sky, we can select all three and right click, photo merge and then HDR. And Lightroom has done a pretty decent job creating an HDR image. And actually it looks a lot like what the real scene was to the human eye, which has a lot more dynamic range than a camera does. But for me, this merged edit lacks depth and looks a little flat. There is a more artistic way to get the most out of a scene and it's using exposure blending with just two images. I'll use the exposure for the sky and a foreground exposure. Right click and edit in, then choose open as layers in Photoshop. Now we have these two images on their own layers, but first we need to check to see if they are aligned properly. I'll head up to Edit and Auto Align Layers. I'll go with Perspective. And as we can see, we had a slight camera shift between frames, probably because we we're on a pebble beach. And that looks pretty accurate. Now it's time to bring back some detail in the foreground. I'll choose the sky layer and head up to Select and Color Range. And then we can sample a shadow area which creates a mask. I'll bring the fuzziness down to about 50 to sharpen the edge and I think we can improve the mask even further by sampling the blackest part of the image. And that's done a really good job, just a few specs which I'll tidy up with the quick selection tool. Now I'm going to save this selection and call this foreground. I'll deselect the mask with Ctrl D. I'll create a mask layer and then load our selection that we created. Now we can begin the artistic exposure blend using a soft edge black brush. Flow at a very low 3% and to help the process I'm going to hide the selection Marching Ants using Control H. We can begin bringing back detail without affecting the sky and because the flow is so low we can gradually see the image forming just as if we were painting a picture choosing which parts of the image to highlight. And if we go too far we can invert the brush to white to take away the effect. I'll just deselect the mask selection and I think we need to match the bottom half of the image with the top using a color balance adjustment layer which I'll sandwich in between these two layers as to not affect the sky. Some reds and yellows in the midtones and some blues in the shadows. Now using a selective color adjustment layer to bring some punch into those reds. The opposite of cyan is red. On the white channel bring some warmth. Now we can just about see the outline of the sun which we can enhance by using the elliptical marquee tool. Find the center and using the alt key drag to the edge of the sun to make the selection. Then I'll create a curves adjustment layer using that selection and just bring the white point in and the black point in to blend with the clouds. Now there's some wet patches on the beach which I'd like to enhance as well. So clicking on the sky layer and with the brush tool holding the alt key I'm going to sample this nice orange colour in the sky. And on a new layer simply paint roughly over those areas. And if you follow my channel you'll know that I like to use blend if by double clicking on the layer to open the layer style dialog box. By dragging the underlying layers black point find the sweet spot and then break apart the slider using the alt key which will soften the transition. And that's a nice little touch. I'd like to add a bit more intensity into the sky on the left here. So using a curves adjustment layer, drag the RGB curve up to brighten the exposure and then add some reds and yellows into the mix. Invert the mask with Control I and with a soft white brush paint in those adjustments. And then a little tweak on those reds and blue channels to match the rest of the sky. And let's just tidy up and rename the layers for neatness. Now for a touch of overall colour grading with some cyan and magentas. And then one final tweak to the exposure of the foreground. I'll load my original selection and use that to create a curves adjustment layer. And ever so slightly increase the exposure. And that's the job done. Using a few exposure blending techniques, we've created a dramatic sunset scene with clean detail in those shadows because it came from two images, both with an exposure of ISO 100.